have a very special guest on the show. He's played in four Olympic Games. He's been the captain of the men's Australian hockey team. He's, he was regarded as one of the greatest players in world hockey in his time. He was also the coach of the Australian women's hockey team for seven years, during which he won two Olympic gold medals and two World Cups. Currently, he's the coach of the Australian men's hockey team at the World Cup on in New Delhi. But that's not all. He's a doctor by qualification. He's been a member of the parliament for 10 years. He's a motivational speaker. He's an, he's an author. You must be all knowing who I'm talking about. It's Australian legend, of course, Dr. Rick Charlesworth. Rick, uh, I've, I've virtually rehearsed for two days to get that intro right. Have I missed anything? No, I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> okay, okay. Rick, so many feathers in your cap. For, t tell me for you, what has been the most enjoyable moment for you and also what has been the most challenging uh, st stint? Well, I think being a player is the best thing. Uh, when I was a player, uh, you uh, only focused on uh, the task. It was a very, uh, uh, very enjoyable. I loved, uh, I loved to do it. When one becomes a coach, then the problem, I think, is that you, uh, you, <coughs> you find uh, you spend all of your time and stress and energy looking at the other teams, preparing your team looking for all of the things that you would like to uh, do that can perhaps make a difference but it's a much more stressful environment so being a player and I think probably uh, uh, my greatest disappointment was losing in the Olympic final in Montreal uh, perhaps uh, um, 10 years later when we won the World Cup in London that was uh, well, the best moment as a hockey player as a coach then I think uh, yeah the Olympics and the World Cups have been uh, wonderful experiences okay okay that's fantastic and Rick, another thing I wanted to ask you, um, oh, did you do your medical studies while you were still playing? Yeah, yeah, well, when one was a medical student, one had lots of time. Uh, there were some lectures during the day, but you could train in the morning, train in the evening. Okay. And uh, so, uh, for, for hockey and for cricket, it was, uh, it, was, uh, it was a good opportunity. But wasn't it hard? Don't you like feel sleepy in class after, uh, <laughs> after yeah, hard missed, days of training? I missed a lot of lectures and, uh, <laughs> and uh, I needed... Uh, I needed to uh, study hard uh, late into the night sometimes, and so that that happened. But uh, I was fortunate to be able to finish it and uh, and then uh, start to work. Right, right, right. Rick, uh, one question I've always wanted to ask you: uh, Now, India has won eight Olympic gold medals. It's something that's almost a burden on the current generation of hockey players, especially now that India isn't doing too well in international hockey. You have witnessed international hockey very closely as a player and the coach over the last few decades. Yeah. Do you think that the, the skill and the speed aspect has really changed over the last few decades? I think the players get better all the time. I think they have more time to train and play and so the skill is improving. It is a higher standard than when we were playing. Okay. That's not to say that the players of the past, given the same opportunities that the players have now, wouldn't have been outstanding, because I'm sure they would. But uh, the skill is improving all the time and you have to keep lifting your standard if you want to stay with the competition. I, I think uh, India still has some wonderful players and, and, and a good team, but they lack international competition. Okay. And uh, in, within India, there isn't the organization and structure that allows them to uh, realize their potential, in my view. Uh, you have had a brief stint with Indian hockey. Yeah. What was your experience like in, in, in that well, one year? I, I, I was yeah. hopeful that uh, I could make a difference. I think that uh, my time here was too short and, and, and probably there were too many difficulties. Okay. My plan, of course, was to come to India. My family came to live here, but unfortunately, a lot of the organizational things were difficult to, to put in place. I suppose my feeling about Indian hockey is that, unfortunately, uh, uh, it's, uh, most of the resources are coming from the government, and I think, uh, therefore, the government bureaucracy has a lot to do with how things are organized. I think, in the end, the coach has to lead the program, you have to have the hockey people in charge and, uh, and I hope that uh, India will sort out the, the difficulties with its, uh, with its uh, administrative structure. I think that is important. I would love to see the game privatised. I think the resources in India are incredible. Do you think world hockey really requires a strong Indian team to be playing consistently at, at, the, at the major tournament? the reason I came here because I think for the game of hockey worldwide, which is the thing that I love, yeah. then uh, India being strong and being a uh, powerful force is, is very important. The other problem that I think perhaps that I experience more than any other is that there's an expectation that tomorrow things can be fixed. Yeah. It will take some time right. to build a solid platform on which you can uh, build a, a very good team.